The CC slant effect is found underneath the distort category, and if I apply that to a layer, let's take a look at the controls. This effect allows us to slant a layer, just like you would imagine, which is another word for skew, basically, but it's basing this distortion on a floor, which is this control point right here. So if I move the Y axis up, I can align this to any point of the layer. So let's just put it right down on the chin since that's kind of the base of my layer and now it's going to slant on that point. If I were to move this up, you see that it moves the slant around because that is now the point that the slant is happening from. Now this type of distortion right here, a skew, can also be found with the transform effect. If I bring that up and apply it, I'll turn off CC slant for a second. There is a skew property and by default, the anchor point from the transform effect is right in the center. So this is gonna do something very similar but it's gonna give you the added control of the skew axis. So if I set this to 90 degrees, this is doing exactly the same thing as CC slant, but it gives us some extra controls. So if that's what you're trying to do, transform might be a better option for that type of distortion. But let's take a look at what other things CC slant can do. I'll move this point back down so it's again aligned with the base of my logo and increase the slant a little bit. There's this checkbox right here called stretching. If I turn that off, my layer just shrunk down a little bit. And if I increase the slant even more, the distortion looks a little bit more like it's rotating around rather than just stretching it. So that's a little bit different than what we can get with the transform. It almost has a 3D effect, like it's swinging around that hinge. We also have the ability to control the height from 100% to anything other than that. I'll reset that back down to 100. And we also have this set color checkbox. If I enable that, then it's just a fill. We can change this to whatever color we want. Now, the best reason I came up with for why there is a fill color and the real purpose of this effect in general is to create a fake floor shadow. So if I increase the slant and I turn the height down, then it's kind of at the angle that a shadow would be. So if I bring in a CC composite, which will bring the original unaffected layer back on top, I need to make sure to uncheck RGB only, and I need to add a grow bounds effect to bring the bounds of this layer back. What's happening right now is the height property in the CC slant effect is determining how much of this layer is being rendered, even with the CC composite effect. So I need to bring grow bounds out just before CC composite and increase that until I can see my entire layer. So that was a little bit of work, but I now have a shadow on the ground basically that I can control. And if I wanted to soften it out, I could add a fast box blur before the grow bounds, increase the blur radius a little bit, maybe change the color to be the background color and then make it just slightly darker. So it looks a little bit more realistic. And now I've added just a little bit of depth to my graphic. But that's really all you need to know about the CC slant effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.